All right, so at this point, my project looks like this. It's still incomplete, but I'm building it together. This is what I'm showing you, that even if we use Codica, it's not going to do everything for you, especially this free version. If you do get the seven-day trial version, it will make it easier for you to make page one, page two, page three, and link them. But where's the fun in that? You're not writing code. So um, what we need to still do here, where I left off, was, OK, I've created an art page, a computer's page, and so forth. So now I'm going to move the elements that, that go from home page into art page. That's the cut and paste part. So back to Notepad. Um, line 58 is where it begins to show me my collapsible set. I want collapsible to exist in the art screen because I'm going to have art 101, art 102, etc. So I'm going to select lines 58 to 74 and this time cut them. Remember, copy and paste leaves an original copy. Cut and paste moves it from the starting point to my ending point. So select those lines and then cut. And we'll scroll down to find the content area of the art screen, which in my case starts on line 110. So on the one line 10, that's where I will paste the collapsible set. And to see if it worked, I will save it and run it. My results should be that I no longer have the collapsible component on the home screen. If I go to the art screen, that's where it's at. That's the point of that. And now I'll do that for the computers. I need to move the, that uh, divider component from the home screen to the computer screen. And that one is made here on line 59 to 68. This one's a little bit different in, it, in that it doesn't have a div. It's a UL, another set of bullet points. UL, unordered list, bullet points. But in it, then it gets a data role of list view. So you want to select those items from 59 to 68, cut that, and I'm going to paste that over on my computer's screen in the content. So I cut that list view element from the content of the home screen to the content of the computer screen. Here's my result. So my home screen is looking a little bit more plain. I just have the placeholder of the picture. Art screen has the collapsible, and then computers has the list view. All right, so I've got some content on each of these screens, 
and I want to then refine the screens a little bit. The thing that bugs me is that I need to have the button highlighted per uh, little section. The art screen, I want that highlighted if I'm in the art screen. So if you, have, if you need a little bit of help, you know, raise your hand or speak a little quieter, please, if you're helping your neighbor, please. Uh, so art screen needs to be highlighted. And that's what we had seen by having the uh, class of uh, active and persist. So what we need to do is attach that to the appropriate button. So perhaps under the, uh, under the, what line is that? Under the art screen, on the art screen, I've still got the button highlighted. I don't want the button of home highlighted. I want the button of art highlighted. So I need to move class, cut and paste it. I need to move it from here to here. But I have to be careful here. So notice what we've got is that on this one, the way they wrote the code is you've got the angle bracket, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, close angle bracket right there. Here, you've got the angle bracket starts here, angle bracket ends here. So let me show you what people do as a mistake, and then we'll do it correctly. People do this. You select this whole line, and then you cut it, and then you paste it right here, just as before which is wrong. Two things have happened. Since I've copied and pasted here, notice it's another color. Pay attention to the colors that Notepad is showing you. They, they, you might not know what they mean, but if something is different than you expected, that's a problem. Let me take it back to show you. When it's up here, look at those colors, reds and purples. When I move it over here, just black. That's a sign that something's different. And what happened was I copied and pasted too much. I copied this whole class, including the angle bracket. I stole the angle bracket from this, because now it has no closing angle bracket. So I would do this instead, which causes another error. People do this. You cut that out, and then you paste it right here. There it is. So I left the angle bracket there. It's floating in a weird way, but it works. That's fine. And I put it here. Whoops, that's still black. It's still wrong. You see the angle bracket. I can't take that one. I need that one. So those are the two ways people could possibly make an error. Here's the way that I would recommend to do it. Leave that there for the moment. And I'm going to push that angle bracket to the next line with an enter, like that. And then I can cut and paste this to this. Actually, Notepad++ is cool because I can actually drag and drop my code. If I select this and then drag it right here. So you can select any bit of code and drag it anywhere that you want. So I've got the angle bracket that closes that tag, I've got the angle bracket that closes that tag, and I put it right there. So now the art button will be the one that is active and persisting, the one that looks like it's been clicked. And the result of that, it's a very minor thing, but it's something that we're used to. I'm on the home screen, so the home button is active. I'm on the art screen, now the art button is active. It doesn't happen automatically. None of this stuff happens automatically. It's all via code. Someone coded everything that you do. You're going to need the exact same thing on computers. Because each screen has its own individual nav bar and its own individual footer. They don't exist. They're not linked together. They exist separately. I need to do the same thing for the computers, the computer screen. So I'm going to go find my nav bar for the ID of computers right here. And I'll do the same thing. I'll move the angle bracket to the next line for computers. 
and then drag and drop the class down there. Question. Can you say that a little louder, please? Yes, you can search, and that's a very good a way to get around because you're going to get a lot of code. You can press Control F to find Control F, and then you can type in there whatever you're looking for, and it'll jump you to different points of the code. So I've um, set up that uh, computer's button with its proper class. And the result of that is that the button looks like it's highlighted when I'm on the appropriate screen. It looks like a really simple thing, but this is one of the tenets of good user experience, letting people know what screen they're on to not disorient people. So a few more things that we're going to do is the header at the top, they all say my SDCE. I should change that again to give people clues about where I'm at. I could use that space to write a little bit more. Uh, going, uh, Judging by the example that we're doing up here, at the top it's going to say art classes, computers classes. All right, we'll take advantage of that. guys a little bit quieter over there if you need to help each other just a little quieter please so um, we need to edit now the header there that's your h1 so that would be a good idea that's how you can quickly jump to the different parts if you press control F to load up the find I want to find h1 that'll jump me to everywhere that h1 exists In this find, I really like it because uh, you can be very specific and, and hone in on a very specific part of the code or be a little bit more generic. Like if I type just H1, it'll jump me to everywhere that H1 exists. But if I only want to jump to where the closing H1 tags are, I can obviously write the whole tag, and that'll jump to where they close. But I need to find where my uh, header for the art screen is, and it's on line 77. So on line 77, let's write computer classes. Oh, I'm sorry, art classes. That's the text that will appear at the top of the document, the top of the page. And then I need to do the same thing for the computer screen, which will be down at line 130. Computer classes. Question. Yeah, so that's what I'm seeing here at the top. Even though it's an H1, it doesn't look as big and bold as this one, which I know is an H2. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. That has to do with a variety of things, which we'll be able to edit, of course. But what's happening is that uh, we've got an H1, but it's also inside of a header. So there's some built-in CSS that is making it behave like that. What's happening right here on line 10, that's what's, that's what's defining 
if there's an H1 and it's inside of a header, make it look like this. And that all comes from that CSS file. Later on, we will make our own sizes or maybe change the font. And we will write our own custom CSS on line 13. So the default is a bunch of these styles and behaviors, and we'll be able to change it. So here we go. When I go to the art screen at the top, it says art classes. I go to computers, computers, computer classes. I've lost a little bit of consistency here. Do you notice the little bit of consistency that I'm missing in art and computers? I might not need an image everywhere. That's right, the heading. I've got here, welcome. I've got a heading here, H2. I've got it on the home screen, but I don't have it on the art or computers screen. So let's take a moment to add that in. Art screen, I want an H2 above the collapsible. And then in computers, I want an H2 above the list view, the dividers here. Um, and I can have more than one H2 because they actually exist in different screen folds. Um, so that's fine that we've used H2 more than once or even H1 more than once. So let's see, I need to find my, uh, we're going to need to refer, when we go from page to page, I might say, let's go to your ID, your page of art. So that's your ID equals art. Let's go to your computer screen. That's, uh, that's ID equals computers. So now we have to think about, we've got multiple pages in this one document. All right, so I found on line 74 my art screen, and then the first div is the data role of header. So we'll skip all the way past that. Then we've got the div data role content. That's the main content area, and then the collapsible set. So I want a space above collapsible set. This is line 102 or so. And here I will write my H2. I'll keep it on one line. I could break it into more than one, but I'll keep it in line in one line. Let's see, what do I have here? When you visit the art, you can use this to um, entice people. What I've got here is become an artist. When you go to computers, it says learn computers. And on home, that's the welcome. So what we'll do is under H2 here, I'll write um, become an artist. And I need to do no, something similar uh, for the uh, for the uh, computer's screen. So I found over on line 156, this is the content area of the computer's page. Same thing, H2. And here I'll write, um, learn computers, or learn about computers.
question. Um, in the mm -hmm. If you see a red on the left side, that's not an error. That just shows you that this is connected up here with that. You might have an error if you've got an underline, but actually sometimes it's... I, I, I would usually ignore that. It's not smart enough to know some things. Like right here, I'm getting a little red underline under nav bar. I know that's not an error, but Notepad thinks it's an error. So the reds are really not going to tell you that there's an error. That's just to show you this connects with that. Okay, one thing I want to do here, uh, I think this happened to a few people, but again, I'm going to give you my code. Uh, one weird thing about the this divider, I'm sorry, this collapsible element, when we created it in Codica, it creates it in a way that's already automatically open. So think of these as drawers. You click on it and it opens the drawer. But notice when I, when I load it up, when I go to it for the first time, one of the drawers is open. So if that had content, it would already be open. The point of this thing, I believe, is to have it closed until you need to open it. So these collapsible elements, by default, are open. So let's see about closing them. And that's over here on line 104. The data role collapsible set begins on line 103, and each drawer is a, hundred and, is a div with a data role collapsible. Data collapsed false. That's why those are open by default. I don't want them open, I want them collapsed, I want them closed. So let's find where it says here data collapsed false and set these to true. I want the drawers closed first to give people the chance to open what they want to look at. Yes? By default, does it only allow one to be open at a time? Yes. So that's why always the last one is open even though they're all set to that's right. They, they all look like they should be open, but the, the widget, the component, only works with one open at a time. I'm going to set all of those to true. It's going to be a very subtle difference, but when I run it, here's before. Notice how that bottom edge is, is white. That means it's open. And then if I go to now, they're all closed. You can also see the plus symbol changed. This means you can click on it to open to see more. And then when you click on it, that's when it actually opens. There's nothing inside of it, but we can have anything we want in there. Text, pictures, videos, etc. Good question? Yeah. But if you leave it open, and you go to another Yes, the default is that if I go over to computers and come back to art, it still remember that one was open. So jQuery Mobile does not have the mechanism built in that it resets itself when you go from page to page. We would have to do that ourselves with a little bit of JavaScript <coughs> a little bit later. So now these things are closed. Uh, I know that I, I know what I'm going to use them for, so I'll fill in a little bit of content here. Uh, they all say section header, but what I want them to actually say is uh, these are going to be some fictional classes that we offer at the college. So the first collapsible element, which is 106, well, I'll make up I'll make up three classes. I'll have art 101. We'll do it this way. We'll just have the name of each class listed there, and then inside of the element, what, what it's about. So Art 101, Art 102, and Art 103. So 101, 102, 103. 
And now those that text that appears in, in that component changes to what you wrote. And then the content that goes inside, you simply add content between the div tags after that h3. So if I wanted some text to appear there, for example, under art101, after the art101, I would just create a paragraph as, as we've done before and write something like... Um, Drawing a basic drawing class taught by, and then whatever content we want, taught by Instructor Smith. The result of that is whatever content, regular paragraphs or even bullet points or pictures or anything after the heading will appear inside of this and it won't go outside of the box and it has a little padding and all of that it's a built-in styling this is the whole point of some using a, a a foundation like jquery mobile that we just start creating our content as fast as possible instead of writing as all of this all of this code and adding the padding and the and all of that we can get to work pretty quickly with it. So just uh, to wrap it up, I'm going to do the same thing for Art 102 and Art 103. Just make up a little bit of a class description. Art 102 is going to be, it's no longer uh, basic perhaps. I'm going to write a, an intermediate class on um, acrylic paint. by Instructor Alvarez. And then make up something for the third one, an advanced class. An advanced class on, uh, I don't know what's hard, uh, oil paints. All right, so what I'm going to do is wrap up the lecture. I'm going to put in my code in the network folder if you want a copy of it. We'll do the final um, 25 minutes or so of lab time if you need some one-on-one -on -one help. Uh, any general questions at this point? So are there any other students?